Start young. That's the popular advice when it comes to fighting the growing obesity problem in this country. But it's not just the kids today who have traded physical activity for sedentary online activity. Across the age spectrum, overweight problems are putting a strain on the healthcare system, and it's leading to serious efforts to reshape the future. You might call him a man on a mission, and given his four-decade commitment to the study of global nutrition and the fight to stop what he sees as an international health crisis, you might just be right. According to research by Dr. Barry Popkin, director of the Interdisciplinary Obesity Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, America is getting fat, and so is the rest of the world. We have 1.6 billion people who are overweight. Uh, in my work, which has spanned living and working in villages and rural areas, uh, villages and slum areas of India, uh, China, the Philippines, countries in South Africa, the Middle East, Central and South America, I have seen such remarkable shifts in the way people eat, move, and drink and the effects on overweight. Most in the U.S. are familiar with the saying, you are what you eat. But according to his international research, and as evidenced in his newly published book, The World is Fat, in this day and age of high calorie and supersized beverages, Professor Popkin believes it might be more appropriate to say, we are what we drink. We have made major changes in the way we eat and drink since World War II. For example, in eating, Snacking today, we consume two snacks a day. In 1960s, only children and preschoolers consumed any snacks. And the snacks today equal a meal for most age groups. Supersizing of the way we eat. We consume much larger portions, both in fast food restaurants and also at home. Weekend eating, we consume an extra 100 to 150 calories a day from Friday to Sunday over the way we eat during the week. And away from home eating. Today, over half of our money and two-thirds of our calories when you conclude not only eating away from home, but also what we bring home that's been cooked elsewhere comes from that away from home category. But it's in drinking where the changes have been most major. Today, the average American consumes almost 450 to 500 calories a day from caloric beverages. Throw into this mix a massive decline in public activity among children as well as adults, a sophisticated and relentless marketing strategy by manufacturers, and the global trend among food providers to replace traditional food ingredients with their unhealthy processed counterparts. And you have, over the course of the past 20 years, what Professor Popkin says is the perfect recipe for what has become a global public health crisis. In the last 15 to 20 years, you go from a situation where people in urban and rural areas in the low and middle income world ate traditional foods, had very little overweight, to one where they eat and drink just like us. Walmart is everywhere. You find not only Coke and Pepsi everywhere, which you would expect, and all the other junk foods that we eat, but today, think of a product like Red Bull that we only had introduced to America a few years ago. It's in every supermarket, in every grocery store, in every gas station in all countries of the globe. This is just the sense of the globalization of food. The same things happen for information and marketing. You can go today to most third world countries and they will be watching the same TV ads that we are. They will see the same TV program. With more than 15 speaking engagements around the world each year and presently working with regulatory agencies and national leaders in China, India and Mexico, Dr. Popkin hopes that as policymakers become aware of the seriousness of this crucial public health issue, large-scale regulatory and policy changes will occur around the globe. From my research, plus my meetings with leaders from government, industry, and academia, I have come to realize that what we need for the United States and other countries to arrest the rapid increases in overweight and begin to change the environment so that people can eat, 
drink and move in a healthier manner is we must change our environment. We must use regulations, taxation, subsidies, and other policies at the national and state and local levels to provide incentives for people to eat healthier food, to make it cheaper to eat healthier food, to provide incentives for people to drink healthier beverages and reduce their intake of less healthy beverages like soft drinks and other sugar-sweetened beverages, and to walk more and to have ways to move at all phases of our life. In his final analysis, Professor Popkins says that although personal responsibility does play a significant role in this present and growing international health crisis, the spread of obesity on an international and grand scale is the result mainly of our high-tech interconnected world in which governments and multinational corporations have an extraordinary impact on the choices we make. You would like to contact Professor Popkin or the Interdisciplinary Obesity Program, please visit www.theworldisfat.org.